It's bizarre to think of a bird as a fly fishing mentor. To see your actions a mere mirror of a simple minded big bird. But it's not until we accept the core of a blue heron's simplicity that we can appreciate its success. The heron knows prime water. It knows that it has to break that water down by its components, focusing on the water it can reach with a quick zap of its neck. Its 30 inch neck is its limits and it knows to stay in full control in its range and it seldom misses. It works that piece of water for considerable time. If the fish aren't cooperating, it looks about the habitat for other ambush points and it will move. It does not overcommit into water it has no chance in. It moves painfully slowly, methodically into its next best position. Long, slow, deep runs of a river, a slow back channel, or a tapered depth finger of a lake or pond offer anglers opportunity to be heron-like. There's almost always a key point of escape cover and trout will use it as home base reference on their cycle routes, coming shallow then moving back to depth and overhead cover. We ran into exactly that on a backwater with a large beaver hut and applied the heron-like stealth mode principles of few movements and quick strikes. We spotted the first nice brown in a foot of water tight to the bank at the base of the beaver hut, which was the prime lie. As we released it, we noticed a second brown move into view and struck quickly. Got it. He refused my big black beetle, but he sure took that nymph. Yeah, he came right up from the depths. Boy, he just fly at that beetle, eh? Really did. As we stood on the beaver hut, having just released those two nice browns, chatting about how amazing it was, our eyes were focused on the water, still scanning from our position. If there were two, why not a third? There was plenty of depth, overhead cover. This was the prime spot. And sure enough, looking at the flat 20 yards away, we spotted two more browns cruising and feeding. So there is just how far upstream from uh, our point? There's two fish coming down, okay. right? So uh, to the left of the, uh, of the white, yep. you know our target, yep. I'm just going to put it out. Okay. Okay, so the first one is coming out. Okay, going further, okay. going right back across left. Okay. Okay, back to the marl to the right. Okay. There we go. That's going to get a fish. Oh, yeah. Got it. See the other one? Yep. Right side by each. Oh, now I have two fish. Oh. The other one's still cruising out there. That's good. That's cool. I'll try to get this guy tighter down. All right. Take him around. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we still have a chance at that other one. He's still just over by the, the white marl. That's cool. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, she came and I just saw her come and open mouth. Again, it was right at me. That's the problem with these huge bombing casts is they come right at you because you can't get it where you want it. That's a downstream take. Now the trick was to get the release shot and get back up to our spotting line before that other brown cycled around. Having interrupted its feeding cycle, I was pretty sure it would change things up completely and come down our shoreline. We had to get ready and it didn't take long. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes, and okay. right down the shoreline. Awesome. That's called not moving at all and just watching, 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 and just waiting because we knew there was another one over there cruising. And it took off when I hooked up that last fish across the way. And I thought, well, we're just going to stay here and, and watch and wait for him to come back. Sure, here we are. Sure enough. Same spot. Haven't moved. Crazy, hey? As we were standing here going, well, is that it? I thought, well, I thought I saw another male with the female that was across the way. Then I saw a rise further up and I thought, well, maybe he's gonna come on this side. Cause usually when there's two of them, they kind of interact in, uh, along the other shore and they stick to that feeding the cycle. And they kind of cross paths and then they cruise together. And when you catch one of them, 
the other one kind of says, hey, that's, that's kind of weird. So if he gets interrupted, he changes what he's doing. Sure enough, by not moving from this spot, we've been here about 45 minutes to catch these four fish. And sure enough, it came up this shoreline. And that was the male. And it was just flip, lead it, twitch it back. You know, when I lead it by a rod length and a half, the fish kind of adjusted its, its, its path. And I said, well, if you're gonna go there, I'm gonna lift everything off the water except for the fly and just kind of slowly twitch, 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 drag it back two feet to its path. And it just came up and that was it. So staying in one spot, situated at the prime line, waiting for the fish to come back to you.